Check out CD Archery Performance ILF Risers for hunters to world champions. CDArchery.com. Made right here in the United States of America. What tab are you shooting? Yes! Uh, don't shoot the tab, obviously. Get to check out our sponsor archerypass.com for all your traditional archery needs. Hey everyone. Hey everyone. Hello. Hello. What is going on? Hold on a second here. You're getting a little feedback. That's good. Hey everyone, welcome back to Quick Shots. I'm your host, Mick Chambers. Here with Burnaby, and I'm not gonna butcher your last name, Burnaby. Why don't you give us uh oh, how do you say it? How do you say it? Phonetically or Filipino like? Filipino. Say, say it like a Filipino, yeah. Makarla ig. You have to roll yeah, the R's. Makarla ig. Makarla ig. I'm never going to do it. But, you know, like for, for college exams and stuff like that, Makareg, Makareg. Makareg. Okay, good. Yeah. That's almost Scott. You almost sound Scottish. Makareg. Yeah. <laughs> That's awesome, man. Well, you know what? I think most people know you by Burnaby. Mm -hmm. And I remember the first time. You were commenting on one of my things. I'm like, someone's putting a joke on me because it was, it was someone from Vancouver that I had on the show, and the 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 name was Burnaby. I'm like Burnaby, like Burnaby, BC, and in, in British Columbia. But anyway, hey, welcome to the show, man. Dude, thank you so much. It's, uh, it's an honor. It's an honor to have you on. Um, you are quickly becoming one of the most iconic uh, shooters in Barebow nowadays. I mean, yeah. people recognize you, don't they? I mean, you have to be a brand, you know. So like, just trying to keep on brand and a couple stuff stuff like that you know i agree i agree 100 with that you definitely have a certain unique brand you know you've got your um you've got john demmer who dresses kind of crazy right just and you mm -hmm. know he keeps it he keeps it interesting and so you can pick demmer out in the crowd you got spanky brooks right spanky brooks has got his hat and he's got his mustache and you have just got style like you're just oozing style right when you get to the get to the line oh absolutely you have to dress the best version of yourself like i don't know like i feel like it's like a costume like it makes me feel confident in myself you know like it's kind of like a wwf wrestler like getting his shorts in and stuff like that you know like <laughs> <laughs> that's so funny i mean i like how you three times wwf intercontinental champion <laughs> uh, i love it i love it it's me you're on here oh uh yo the man burnaby uh in the house josh hey how are you doing Melanie, as always, thank you very much for joining. If you're in the comment section, please let uh, Burnaby know you're here and, and say hi. So when you pop in, say hi. We're going to leave time at the very end for questions, and you can ask him anything you want. I don't think anything's off limits here. Oh, um, no, so, no. yeah, just, just say whatever you want. <laughs> hey, man. Um, okay, so let's kick this off. Uh, hi, Neil. Oh, man, I haven't seen Neil in a while, man. Oh, man, Neil. The bow band? The Boban, oh, yeah. Mr. Boban, Boban. Mr. Mr. Boban, um, love his stuff. Uh, I, I, I'm sh back to shooting uh, longbow, um, mm -hmm. just because Josh makes it look so easy. No, I, okay, <laughs> and, uh, yeah, okay, yeah, whatever. But I used now I'm back to using the Boban again. I was mm -hmm. shooting that. You shoot a CD archery riser, right? Yeah, I do. I shoot the 29, and then for a bit I was also shooting the Boban as well. Um, now I like it for more of a trad kind of thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Me I too. feel like with a my, my bow is just too heavy. Like I'm just like it needs to be a string kind of thing. Yeah, but I, like, it's a durable product, and I totally love it. You know, like the innovation of it, and then like his story with his uh, product is absolutely amazing. Because dude, that guy is a jeweler himself. So like he's making this kind of like I don't even know like a finger sling with a ring in it. You know, yeah, it's so good. It's so cool. Yeah. Uh, if you haven't seen the bow band, go check it out. Um, not a commercial for Neil, but uh, it is a great, it's a great, it is a great product. Um, yeah, and he makes fantastic jewelry too. It's pretty awesome uh, just to see him him uh, work. You know, anyone that's creative like you or him, I mean, you have you you have a massive creative side too. You're a, you're an artist as well as an archer, right? Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. So um, 
by trade, um, I'm a digital marketer. So like, that's what gets the, the bills paid, the lights on, but like, yeah. like on the weekends or like during like every, I don't know, like Christmas party, I play drums. I do a lot of jazz and like hip hop and stuff like that. So used to be in a metal band and kind of stuff like that. But like now as I started getting into archery, I was just like, all right, you could only pick a couple of things. Like you could only, are you going to do studio gigs or are you going to practice and then like get good at archery? So like, this season, I'm just really hyper focusing on that archery portion of it. That's awesome. So, so how did you start off in in archery? I mean, what's what's a? Did you grow up in LA? I grew up in LA. Yeah. Okay. So, how's an LA kid uh, go from city living to archery shooting? Oh man. Okay. So what happened was um, in 2019, um, a bunch of my college friends got together and then we rented out like a whole like. Airbnb and like Big Bear or something like that, like near the mountains. Mm -hmm. There's no Wi-Fi or anything like that. So like you're not connected to our phones or laptops, whatever it be. So like I was just like, okay, I need to find an activity to be outside. Um, I didn't know what I was buying. So I went to Big Five. I got like a youth bow with like a yellow jacket, like a um, little, little stop spot and then like a couple arrows. And then like I didn't know what I was doing, but like I thought it was super awesome. So mm -hmm. From there, like we left it, we left there for like a week. And then I started researching like, okay, cool. Where's the closest archery range? And then lo and behold, like there's an archery range four miles away from where I live. So it was super convenient. It was super easy for me to transition from, hey, what the hell is archery in LA? To like, oh damn, there's actually like a scene here in LA for that kind of stuff. Yeah, I mean, I, I would prefer to see more people out that way on the West Coast shooting, but uh, mm -hmm. there's definitely a scene out there. There's definitely uh, the it's mainly a Olympic recurve, though. I mean, because it's yeah. so close to the training center, right? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Um, there's I don't know, like in the vicinity of where I live in Orlita, you have so many ranges like 30 minutes away from us. You know, like we got Rancho Park in Studio City. We got Pasadena Roving Archers in Pasadena. We got Oak Tree Gun Club and then we have Woodley Park in Woodland Hills. So like all of these guys in proportionately are full like Olympic recurve. But like we have a few killers that do bare bow and traditional and stuff like that. So we're there. Yeah. I, so I was, I was saying in my last one with Alex that uh, I, I shot Simi Valley. Mm -hmm. um so that that was a good course and i had a lot of access to guys that were level level four and level three and level four coaches that had just come out of um training with kissick lee mm -hmm. um, and so you know they okay so i put a uh i put a stabilizer on my um on my uh bow and i had a sight on there and i tried that for a while and i just i couldn't i couldn't a i couldn't i was terrible at it so that was mm -hmm. one thing but b um it just didn't feel right to me for archery. So mm -hmm. it was kind of funny. Tell us a little bit more about, okay. So you, you bought, you went to big five, which is a local sporting goods store there in uh, Los Angeles in that area. Um, mm -hmm. You bought a bow. Uh, then you started shooting it at some of these clubs. What happened after that? After that um, it was just like, okay, cool. Like I need to get like a real proper kind of recurve bow per se. And then I just did what everyone else did. Like we just went on Amazon, you know, just primed the Samic Sage, you know, like yeah. the Samic Sage is an old faithful, you know, like it's a great, it's a great beginner bow. I totally dig it. But um, I got those. And then from there, just like discussions on discussions on like, okay, cool. What is arrow spine? Um, what do these limbs do and stuff like that? And then you hit the archery bug and then lo and behold, like it just becomes more expensive. Like it's, I thought like this hobby was going to be cheaper than like golf or like shooting rifles, but like archery is as expensive as you want it to be. So yeah. Yeah. yeah WF 29 that you shoot currently is not, is not a, a poor man's uh, bow. Oh um, man. It's not. No, it's not. It's, not. it's a tank. <laughs> that thing is a tank, man. It's the uh, boat anchor, but uh, it, it uh, if you can buy points, that's probably one of the ways you can do it. Absolutely. Have you, do you shoot any trad? Uh, I shoot a little bit of trad. Um, I have, um, what's it called? A bear, like one piece recurve. And then I have like some SAS, um, like longbow and like, and I shoot it with like wood arrows, but a majority of the time when I'm practicing, it's going to be that WF 29. But like, if there's like a competition that like, we just want to like hang around, like dick around with friends, like, yeah, I'll pull out the, the bear. Or I'll pull out the SAS and yeah. It's just something organic about like running those kind of like trad items versus like the stabilizer or like 
the the weights and the plunger and stuff like that it's a uh, it's a different skill set but it's a really cool one yeah I, you know it is a different skill set and you got to kind of get into this stupid uh into the feel of it like uh, I, so i'm shooting the wf 29 too right so i shoot mm -hmm. 29 like that i've just like automatic pick it up mm -hmm. i have my downstairs dojo where mm -hmm. i can i got room so i can i can throw 20 yard shots down down range so during in between meetings i just pick it up throw some yeah. arrows in it shoot at a target and you know practice 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 with uh mm -hmm. you know um uh, whatever i can whatever I'm, I'm i'm trying to do whatever michael wholesome and karen are telling me i should be practicing mm -hmm. uh you know and then anyway so i'll practice that then uh then um with the information they gave me on our last show if you haven't seen that yet go back and in, in, into the into our catalog and on uh, archery geek on youtube and and uh karen and michael wholesome uh that was a great episode uh this one will be too though hold on just hold on everyone hold on it's about to get crazy no i don't know um so anyway so i shoot that whenever i can but then when i put it down i go pick up like a a trad bow it's mm -hmm. it's weird man it's like oh it's, absolutely it's its own monster like it's <laughs> it's crazy when people say like oh like oh i could shoot like that because i have all those gadgets that could help me with my archery is like no man like traditional and bare bow it's they're different nuances they're harder in their own senses and stuff like that like but i totally understand how that feels and where like you pick up the 29 and then it just drops down versus <laughs> It's like fucking long girl. This is like, oh fuck, you know. <laughs> it almost flies out of your hand. It's like, oh, this absolutely. Thing's too light. This thing's too light. Um, I was actually going to get to this question here, Josh. So, um, you have a special WF twenty nine though, because you custom. You oh custom. yeah, yeah, yeah. Tell us a little bit about it. So, I have the weight forward twenty nine. Um, I have good communications with um. Calvin and Mrs. Smock, great customer service. When I talk to any other like riser company, it doesn't get the same communications as I get with CD Archery. That's why I totally dig what they are doing. Mm -hmm. And then I just asked them like, oh, uh, can I just get the blank billet? Like don't Cerakote it, don't do anything like that. Um, just leave it like a blank raw billet, just full aluminum, don't treat it or anything like that. What was the initial, um, the initial process the thing that i was trying to do first was i was trying to get it engraved like one of those like old western like shotgun rifles oh yeah yeah yeah, yeah. It's yeah. sick right and i was just oh, like oh yeah. shit, this is gonna be like a cowboy bow you know yeah and i was just like okay cool like so i just started like calling people I was like hey how much does this cost how much does this cost and then like it gets up to like two thousand to three thousand dollars for like a custom cnc machine <laughs> so it's just like okay cool like the, the riser is expensive in itself, but it's not as expensive as the CNC treatment. So I was just like, okay, cool. What other kind of like weaponry can I turn this into? It's just like, all right, cool. Fuck it. Katana. So like, yeah. Yeah. like just got some like samurai wrap, just did all the whole thing. Like it has like the real like stingray um, skin on it. Like I, I did it pretty proper. So like when you do something with aluminum, like it doesn't come polished so it's a labor of love like this bow is ridiculously shiny if you're shooting with me outdoors and then you're like on my left side and the sun is there i'm absolutely sorry <laughs> it's been planned like that i'm sorry but like it's just a labor of love of just hand polishing it like with like anger like oh i'm gonna win i'm gonna do this kind of stuff because you really got to enjoy your equipment and like really trust your equipment and then um, what CD Archery provided me was something that I could be really proud of. Uh, yeah, absolutely. And then you doing it up and customizing it may, just makes it your own, right? Mm -hmm. um, there's a, there's been a lot of interesting, really interesting stuff that's been going around lately. Um, uh, Maggie Brensinger, her dad uses trailer hitch as a as a weight as a weight oh, okay. he, he turned it yes. into a he turned it into a weight on the front of his uh, bow so you know there's a lot there's so many it's it's interesting now you know we're getting customized on our bows you, i think you're kicking off a trend probably uh and you'll see a lot more of that stuff right the gelos yeah. are gelos got interesting shit on them too like oh shit like, the gf you know, whatever the yeah. fuck that thing is like it comes with like a small stabilizer i'm just like yeah, yeah dude <laughs> I'm trying to like save my food stamps to get one. Like <laughs> that looks really cool. Like honestly, like I want to try those out. Or same with um, 
the Tempest Riser from um, Border Archery. Yeah, with the oh, thing on cool. it. Yeah, they look good. That's a who shoots a Tempest? Do we know anyone? Um, I know that Milnet guy from Canada. No, nah, I don't. No, nah, doesn't ring a bell. Yeah. Uh, get this like people coming in here. <laughs> do not, do not put. Uh, uh, put political stuff in my comments because you can get deleted and booted out. <laughs> Just FYI. Um, anyway, okay, so getting back to you. Uh, okay, so tell us a little bit more about your journey. I know you worked at an archery shop too. We haven't talked. Oh man, that. like yeah, Alex totally told you that. Um, yes, yes. So I started shooting 2019, and then I was I hit the archery bug. So I was like, okay, cool. I want to shoot as much as possible, and then come to find out that like. Okay, cool. Public parks in California or in Los Angeles are currently closed due to the COVID-19 situation. And then come to find out that um, in New Hall, like probably like 15, 20 minutes away from me, um, there is an archery range there um, that is open because um, I guess a gun range is kind of one of those, um, I forget what it's called. Like there was so much like COVID vocabulary, essential business. Really? Uh, Rifle range yeah. is essential business. It was essential business. So I was just like, no fucking way. It's essential business. And then I'm like, I'm, I'm there. I'm there. Whatever. If, so, if, if there's, if there's cops that go there to, 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 to practice or train, it would be essential. Right. I mean, fuck it, dude. Like you got to stay yeah. strong, I guess, you know, you gotta, you gotta get in there. <laughs> uh, Angelo yeah. Cruz is like, yeah, essential. Thanks. <laughs> we got it. Yeah. We got it. Thank Pretty you. Just keep up with from, from there. What's it called? Like I was working remotely. So, I was working for Warner Brothers at the time. And then, so what I would do is just like, I would work the archery range and then work on my laptop and then like help like service other customers and stuff like that. And then just get back to my laptop. So like I'm running two jobs at the same time. So Don't that was pretty Look at you. That's Absolutely. You got to optimize your time. <laughs> Dude, that, that's awesome though, man. Thank you. That's congratulations. I mean, I wish I could do that too. I wish I could kind of somehow get a, um, get two jobs at the same time i can't i'm like i am so i just for anyone if if you, i got friends listening right now i apologize man i have been so booked um i am going to the single string boot camp though on uh friday i'm driving up to ohio are you gonna fly out burnaby to see us oh my gosh like i want to like i've been talking to trevor and matt yaka um i really want to but unfortunately just like just based off like the economy and stuff like that like I didn't collect enough food stamps, so I decided to just pick up Arizona Cup. So, hey, first yeah. of all, hey, listen, dude, if you're gonna drop names, Yak is not not a good name drop. I'm just no, telling not. You. No, no. Trevor's good. Fielder, Fielder will work. <laughs> uh, yeah, I know he's gonna be out there. So those guys are gonna be out there. It's gonna be a lot of fun. If you get, if you're, in, we don't need any more people. There's like over a hundred people coming to this thing this That's year. Insane. That's a lot of people. That's insane. That's more subscribers than I have on YouTube. 100. Oh man. <laughs> uh, well, we I know what to do. Hit like and subscribe. New videos every Tuesday. You know, okay. you're my media. Button. I need you. I need you to be my media guy. <laughs> <laughs> I love it, dude. <laughs> uh, uh, Neil, Neil, why wouldn't you stop by? How far away is the Arizona Cup for Neil? I, how, tell me in the comments how far away it is for you. Like, where is it in? Where is it? Where is it? Phoenix? This year? Uh, it's in Phoenix, Arizona, like proper Phoenix. So it's like the Ben Avery range. Never been there, but like Expedia said it was super quick and easy, like a 20 minute drive from the airport. So it's like, OK, yeah, one Neil's hour. From a, Neil. Neil's an hour away. Don't don't miss out on that. Just come by, stop, say hi. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think I think that would be cool. I heard that, though, you could get weather, though. Oh, yeah. yeah. I, I hear nightmares that like you get super windy. People are like shooting off and like aiming at the other target or whatever it be. And you know, like, I'm just like, what the fuck are you talking about, dude? Like, yeah, honestly, it's 50, like that's crazy to me. It's 50 yards. It's 50. So that's your bear bow. You're going to be shooting bear bow 50 yards at that tournament. How do you expect to do it in Arizona? I, they're all baked down there anyway. They're all, they're too much sun. I think you should clean up, right? Yeah. I mean, how well will I do? Like only the Lord knows, you know, like I've tried my best to practice. As no, well as I can. You should know you're supposed to be training for it. Oh yeah. absolutely. I'm confident enough that I will shoot as well as I practice. And then that's a double-edged sword, you know, like um, some, like there'll be times that like, you'll be like in the zone and hyper practice. But like there'll be days and where 
I don't know, like you just have an off day, so you just shoot thirty arrows and stuff like that. But like, tell, tell us what your tell us what your gear is for for this for the gear? Arizona. Yeah, tell, okay. tell us what gear you're taking. So the gear that I have, it's, well, it's long. It's going to be a twenty nine inch WFX nine. Mm -hmm. um, I'm running the Whiffler Punk Lunger, um, recommended by Matt Yaka. I'm using a Gabriel Bydrop, the 2022. Yeah. I'm running this custom R core grip that uh, Anise created for me. So like we just modulated a couple of grips and then like it has like an off shelf. So it feels like my my Matthews VXR. Um, I'm running Uka Shorts uh, SX80 at 40 pounds and I'm running X10s for the arrows. So you're getting, you are really getting it. You, you might even have to choke down on that a little bit. You might have to string walk to get forties. At... No, dude, I'm, I'm point on. It's crazy. You're point on, you're point I'm on. Point on with these X tens. It's crazy. It sucks because unfortunately, like I have this challenge of my draw length is super short. It's like 26. Oh, okay. So I'm not getting that rated 28. So like, um, I'm unfortunately shooting like an Uka that like is like 45 just for me to get to the 40 point on. But like, I'm looking forward to talk with Sam. Um, I have a bunch yeah. of, I have a pair of cack limbs from what's it called? Backwoods Composites. Backwoods Composites. So yeah. like, hopefully that comes in the mail, but I'm super excited for that. Yeah, dude, those limbs are, those limbs are even more efficient than the ones you, the S80s, which the S80s are really efficient limbs, correct? And I think they use the shorts. I think uh, Trad Lab uh, tested the S80 shorts. Yeah. on the wf29 i think it's on their website and mm -hmm. you're really getting into the limb you know with the, those shorts so absolutely like i don't feel the stack with the 29 with the shorts a lot of people don't want to have the 29 because oh like it's going to be such a long bow or whatever it be i can't use shorts normally in theory like the shorts like they're not as a smoother draw but like with the wf29 like holy shit this is the smoothest thing i've ever pulled like this feels yeah. like long so i have yeah. i have some shorts there too i got some s80 shorts that i might put on my 29 it's just such a small bow that it's just short for me yeah uh, but yeah no that's it i now i might i might do that what was the name of the uh plunger you were using again i I'm using a whiffler the whiffler that's right the one that comes in the wood case Is yeah the wood case the bamboo thing magnetic yeah like it, it got lucky like i was working on my biter plunger and then i forgot the um the little anchor or the little wrench so the like wrench. I popped in the the biter or the whiffler and i was like oh shit like okay this works so like if it's not broken don't fix it so yeah. i haven't changed it and hopefully it'll continue serving me dude i almost some days i just go i'm gonna put a springy rest on my bear bow because I, I it works, <laughs> it works. Shit, have you ever used a springy rest no but like i know people that will like fucking shoot like rounds around everyone i know that there's a couple of the mccain's do you know those guys gary mccain and sandy mccain no, I don't think so. So they're um they're from um the West Coast. I think they're in Northern California, but they shoot that springy rest on like NFAA, like on um, like point on bare bow kind of thing, yeah. and then fucking murder with the springy rest. I'm like, yeah. Yeah. this is insane. Like yeah. here we are with all this bullshit, and then like it's it's a springy rest, and then they're just running circles around us. And I'm like, I want to try this thing. I don't know if you hunt. Do you hunt? Uh, I do. Yeah. So, uh, you know, on a trad bow, there's nothing there. You, a spring. I will live and die by a springy rest on a trad bow hunting every single day. It keeps the arrow on the rest, you know, when it's in the tree. Yeah. And, and again, the accuracy is way better than you think it's going to be for the stupid pigtail on. Exactly. Out. It's really weird looking, uh, but it, it, I love it. I love it. Um, I don't know what this means. I, I'm going to put it up here. What gear do you take, TRT or HGH? <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, what gear do I take? Um, you know, uh, it, it's, it's all USA Archery compliant. USADA will be okay with it. You yeah, know, just don't uh, win. Your, yeah, your your typical protein shakes. You know, like your uh, your acai bowls and your little pre workout proteins. You know, Absolutely. there it is. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my God, Sandy and Gary McCain are uh, California trad legends. That yeah, thanks, Jack. Um, yeah, I have heard the name. I it rang a bell. I just couldn't remember. I think someone even. I think I even reached out to the pair at one time and to get on the show. But uh, if anyone knows them, let let them uh, let them know. I'd love to have them on the show. 
Um, I, I just didn't want to say I knew them, but oh. <laughs> I, you know, since we haven't, we haven't been on the show yet, but, um, anywho, so you got a tournament coming up here. Take us through your shot process. What are you working on right now? Uh, right now, like I, I just can't, I'm packing. Like, honestly, like I said to myself, like, look, if I'm not prepared by Thursday in terms of my shot process and my execution, like just don't show up. So like, I, I literally just hammered this whole thing in like at least like what like three hours a day at the range and then like finding tuning and stuff like that so in terms of that like that is my preparation right now like i'm just kind of like packing it now if i'm not ready if i have if i was not ready on thursday i'm not going to be ready on tuesday for arizona cup like it's you just got to be brutally honest with yourself and i've been brutally honest with myself so i've been prepared from there but um yeah that's what i'm working on right now my shot process um it's as a musician like i go through it like in bpm so like it's weird because like when i'm working on like grinding down like my practice and stuff like that i have my headphones on i'm listening to like a click track like a metronome mm -hmm. so like i keep it at 70 beats per minute and then from there it's just like every time i snap it's a measure and then at the eighth or 16th one that's when i start shooting so like pretty much like I'm counting in fours. So like I'm raising my bow. This is going to take three measures or three beats. And then while I'm holding this, this is where everyone kind of fucks it up and there's snap shoots kind of yeah. thing. <clears throat> I try to hold this as comfortably as possible and then just release once the measure is done. So unfortunately, I don't know like who's musicians and stuff like that, but like at 70 beats per minute, it's going to be three measures. The last execution is going to cut in half time and then you execute. I feel like archery is kind of like a game of removing variables and then time is a variable they could easily remove. Mm -hmm. So hopefully like that works out. Um, in terms of my shot process, I'm, I'm point on at 50. My anchor point is my canine and then like I'm hooking onto my jaw. Top canine, yes, one here. Top canine, yeah, top canine. And then like, like just as uh, Matt Yaka would say, you know, like it's not like a dramatic like kind of pull. It's just kind of like a short one. Like I know Fon Gerard does it to the ear, you know, like yeah, yeah. Yep, that's right. um, it's removing variables. And I agree with that sentiment that Matt Yaka would say in the sense that like, OK, cool, remove variables. But like you could move remove way more variables on a shorter like release versus like a really giant NTS one, which is what's challenging for me now in terms of like getting into this NTS format. So are you, <clears throat> so first of all, Mike, Mike and Karen, it, I mean, a, a lot of people that are adapting for, um, adapting for a uh, uh, bear bow uh, and they're adapting maybe NTS or they're adapting some style for bear bow. It, it is always this kind of, it's always a sort of mm -hmm. sh shorter release here, you know, um, a, uh, so anyway, um, Hey, Trevor, you missed the, we just gave you a shout out. Uh, but <laughs> we said, we said nice things about you. So Trevor just joined. Yeah, dude, we talked about triple street T strings, archery boot camp. Yes. I yes, love it. Yes, yeah, we did. And we're so excited. I'm excited to get there and, and um, I'm leaving Friday. I got to leave early. Ohio's a lot farther away from me. Than I thought it was. <laughs> um, Mike uh, says, Michael Wholesome says, uh, we have used the metrodome with students. It works. It does. Yeah. I can't, I can't imagine it works because I know Fawn actually even sings a little song. Um, Alex was saying on the last show that she sings Twinkle, Twinkle, Little Star. Someone know what Fawn's song is? I thought it was Twinkle, Twinkle, Little Star too, if you can leave a comment. Yeah. But but she sings a little song too and she slows down her shot. Slow down your shot process. Um, mm -hmm. It works. It just does, man. When you give yourself time to get into uh, alignment, um, everything works out better. Well, absolutely. I mean, it helped me stop my, my snap shooting. It helped me like with my shaking and stuff like that. I'm so hyper-focused on like what, like for Fawn and Alex, I would be hyper-focusing on the song versus like, oh man, am I going to hit this thing and stuff like that? So like, it kind of like removes that like target panic or like that shot anxiety. So I feel like there's that cross learning that's happening in terms of music, like metronome, like what the guy was saying in, in archery, you know? I know. You shook me uh, all night long, okay? I don't. It's, I think he's joking. <laughs> shook me all I want to do that. <laughs> I want to do that. That's funny, though. If it is true, that's funny. Um, 
But if it's not true, it's even funnier. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> we'll make it true. Yeah. Start the rumors. We got to get away from all these tricks, of, uh, tricks of the trade, right? <clears throat> from all yeah, these uh, totally. experts. And, uh, Chip's eating it up though this year. Um, Chip so, is crushing it. Oh yeah, I don't. Even, you're lucky he's not coming to Arizona. I don't think he's going to Arizona anyway. Um, <laughs> <coughs> all right, so take me through. Your show. So you get to here, you're on the fourth stanza of the, yeah of your operatic. Uh, so pretty much I'm here, I'm counting to five, one, two, three, four, five. But before that, I'm making sure this elbow is down and I'm, I'm that's a shoulder, but that's a shoulder, by the way, Burnaby, just stuff. This shoulder, this yeah, a shoulder. A shoulder. It's not an elbow. Whatever, you know, <laughs> whatever. So from there, like, I just try to ensure that this, this hand doesn't leave my face. Like, I feel like that helps me with my, my, that plucking situation. Mm -hmm. People call it waving high, but like, if you're, into your back i feel it's a lot easier that's something that like i started doing this year like last year i wasn't engaging my back and stuff like that so it's a good learning process and where when i'm here push your back and then try to make this thing as small as possible but making sure that you don't flick and stuff like that and oh. i feel like my scores really do show that there's more there's less variance from left and right with that oh my gosh yes um this is a good question i this is a great one from Josh. Uh, does the music help you execute the last shot of an end when you have two in the gold and nerves are rattling? Oh my gosh, this is this Dude. is my nemesis. This is my nemesis. My I hate friend. that. Like I you shoot it. arrows and then you're just so fucking excited and shit, you know? You self implode, yeah. And you're and you like your legs and you get like a three or a four, you know? Like <laughs> you dump one in the black. No, oh, man. Oh, I was gonna say in the ocean, but yeah, but. But did, maybe the music, well, the, does the mu music help you at all with that, you think? I think it does, but, like, you have to be the master of your mind, you know? Like, you could be singing your kumbayas, you shook me all night long, Mary had a little lamb. Yeah. But, like, at the third end, you know, like, if you're that excited and you're not hyper-focusing on your shot process, then that's the difficult part. But, like, with music helping me execute my last shot when there's, like, two golds and then, like, my nerves are up, not necessarily like first and foremost, I have to control like my emotions and be like, all right, sick Burnaby. Like you got two, two golds, you know, well done, but you can't snap shoot or like unexecute it, like how you've been practicing. So that's just kind of a thing in where um, it's hard to relearn kind of thing. Like, yeah, you're winning. You're, you got two golds, but like now you just have to re educate yourself. Like, <laughs> slow down, you know, slow down champion, you know, like you need to pause some breaks into it. And then yeah. the music is important. My gosh, that's good. That's good advice. Cause it is so nerve wracking when you got Absolutely. two people down there and you're, you're so close to a 30 mm -hmm. uh, and you, and you know, your score is going to go up, you know? You know Absolutely. You know, and so it's, it's really, really difficult. Um, do, for Arizona, is it five arrow ends? I think it's six, six, six and then six six eliminations, which is three. Yeah. Yeah. And that goes to three. Okay. Dave Diggs, Burnaby is the man. Thug life for real. Greetings from Seoul, Korea. Yo, I'm popular, dude. I'm Mr. Worldwide. Why the hell? <laughs> guys, people Korea. know you in Seoul, Korea. Like, that's awesome. Korea. That, <laughs> I don't know. How do you, yeah, that's 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 interesting. Hey, Dave. Um, uh, you have to be present even when the last arrow of the end. Yeah, Mike. Yeah. Uh, that's probably coming from Karen because Michael's impetuous. Uh, so it's probably a Karen comment, actually, because they're sharing the same account. Um, <laughs> no, I, I think that's so right. I, I cannot, but the, you're hyper. You're like, I want to get that last arrow down there Absolutely. so I can go score, so I can go get down there and score. I That's how, at least how I feel. Mm -hmm. um, but, uh, yeah, it, so that's why I always dump the first arrow. I always make it like a six. Oh, yeah. And, yeah, there's nowhere to go. That's but scout arrow, you know, yeah. that's a scout arrow. No worries. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh that's funny um so do you how do you feel about going to arizona this week you know like this is the first year that i started saying to myself like all right cool like you've you've really invested in yourself in terms of archery you're you're spending x amount of money just to get the best equipment so you don't blame the equipment the only thing that you could do is blame yourself i've been shooting locally in terms of like just staying in California and then doing the trip to Vegas. But like now it's just kind of like, 
I feel like it's kind of like a big fish in the pond kind of thing. Like, okay, cool, California, like I get to shoot those and then I get the podium on those. But what is it like on a national level? So now it's just kind of like seeing my friends and like going there to Arizona and seeing what like the stress factors will permit from there. You know, like mm -hmm. I feel like Arizona Cup is a big um, jump in my archery career in a sense that like, I don't like traveling. So like, I like to just stay local. And then like, if it's not like a day trip or anything like that, I'm not going to go to your thing. But like now it's just kind of like, all right, cool. Like, I'm just very curious on like, how do I stack up from like the greats and stuff like that? And then like, see if I could just replicate and follow them. Yeah. It's, I don't want you to be putting too much pressure on yourself. I mean, but you know, yeah. it's, it's get, you know, you get what you get. Right. Mm -hmm. um, I think you said it best when you said, um, or no, I think it was John Lennon said, uh, the love that you give is equal to the love that you get. Mm -hmm. And the, the, the archery that you do is equivalent to what you're going to show up at a tournament with. And it's usually a little bit, a little bit less. Mm -hmm. Um, what kind of cigar are you smoking right now? What I'm smoking right now is a Bolivar. Um, it's a nice cigar, you know, like it's not one of those expensive Cubans. Um, but like, I feel like it's kind of one of those things in where you think of Cubans, you think of like a champagne, like a Don Perignon. Mm -hmm. Like if you don't know anything about champagne, it's Don Perignon. But like if you really know about kind of like champagne and stuff like that, you know that there's another brand that is way better than your Don Perignon and way cheaper. So like in reflective of cigars, like that's what I have right now. It's a, a Boulevard Corfidia. Mm -hmm. um, dude, this is like a working man cigar, you know, like I just got out of work and then I was just like, cool, like let's do this interview. And let's um, let's, um do this uh, interview with Mick, you know, so like I just got this working man cigar and I totally love it. I really no. I appreciate you doing this and uh, and and giving up, getting up to speed on on cigars. I, I'm a cigar smoker too. On occasion, yeah. Um, I gave up a lot. I gave up a lot of the stuff for Lent this year. Oh, dude. Uh, well, see, same. Like, I wish I gave up. Like, when you do Lent season in terms of being Catholic, like I'm Catholic myself. Like, you must sacrifice something that you truly want to give up. You know, that's, that's right. Yeah. To you, you know, like yeah. I feel like. I wish I challenged myself to do something like that because like, I feel like in terms of like a brand and like a, as a personality, like cigar smoking and like whiskey is part of it, you know? So next year, you know, like I feel like in terms of like my commitment to Christ, I think Lent would be a good cigar removal. I think it's so I actually gave up um, drinking and I, and you, you messaged me say, Hey, let's, let's have a drink while we're on. I like, I, I would typically do that with you. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. And then I gave up drinking for Lent. And then now I just, I'm keep going. I'm I'm going because I feel better sometimes, you know. And I'm I'm getting. Oh, better. absolutely. Yeah, and it's just uh, although you know uh, we're off to Italy this uh, this in May, so I'll be yes. drinking a lot of wine. So I'm saving it for that. I'm saving it for that. And uh, so that that pairing of what a Romeo and Juliet, what you would do an 1875 cigar. Um, what do you think? What, what's a good pairing? What kind of what kind of? Uh, I'm guessing a Scotch or is that a Scotch? A, you know, like right now, like I have a Scotch right now, Lagavulin 16. You know, Old Faithful. It really just depends on the situation. Like, did we eat? Are we with friends? You know, like mm -hmm. what's the night like? Uh, Romeo and Julieta, like 1875, is my one of my go-to cigars. It's on rotation. I would just do it with a nice Scotch, you know, or like. It's, it's a working man cigar. It's like five or six dollars, you know, like it's a nice yeah. name thing. Like you, know, you can have it with like a natural ice, you know, like you can have it with like. <laughs> no, you you can. Yeah, you can, dude. You think it's just a cash cigar? I, I, I don't think it's a cash yes. cigar. That makes me feel like fucking I have money. I don't have money. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> dude, <you're... laughs> like, if I wanted to, if, if I'm with friends and then the, I don't know, what do I pair with a Romeo and Julieta? I would pair it with good accompaniment with friends. How's yeah, that? Perfect. That's perfect, man. <laughs> uh, <laughs> when will Burnaby get a Korean bow and do some 145 meter targets with me at uh, Woodley Park? Oh man, dude, Dave is a crushing like trad. Or he does. We have we have this opportunity to do um, what's that thing when they shoot like 500 yards away um. I forget what kind of style of archery it is. 500 Clout. yards? Clout. We have the opportunity to Clout. shoot at Woodley Park like 
400 meters. So like Dave and a couple of his friends, you know, like every Sunday they're just launching these arrows, you know, like that's funny. I like 300 meters hitting like Korean targets, like, like a, like a little cardboard from 300 meters. I'm like, dude, this is astonishing. Cool. You know, like it's crazy that we have this in LA, you know, that is pretty cool. That's pretty cool. Mm -hmm. I like this comment by Chip. Mad Dog 2020 with a Swisher Sweet. It has to be the purple one, though. It has to be purple. It's got to be purple, my friend. If it's great. not purple, why would you even bother? If it's not great. Uh, but then, the yeah, both. Both Mad Dog 2020 and the Swisher Sweet have to be the great. Or oh, my God. That was like or whatever my, that purple my high was. school. It has to be the blue Mad Dog, and it has to be the gray Swisher Sweet. <laughs> <laughs> pairs, pairs perfectly. Pairs perfectly. Oh, my God. That's funny. Um <laughs> So how do you keep nerves down? How are you gonna keep nerves down this week? How do I keep uh, my nerves down? Yeah. Oh man, like it's it's a it's a huge it's a fucking movie. Like honestly, like when when I'm out of when I'm not shooting and I'm just waiting for my turn to shoot, like I have my headphones on and it's just trying to like really execute yourself in a sense of flow. Mm -hmm. Flow is a sense of like when time is very limitless and everything seems really easy. It's a Mihail Misempni high kind of like process in where you're just in the zone. So for me, like the, the hardest part is not necessarily the execution, but it's just truly staying in the zone. How do I do that? I'm listening to music. It's a curated playlist that's on my headphones. Are you, allowed, to? Are you allowed to? So you're allowed to listen to your own headphones when you're shooting? When I'm not shooting. So like when you're, okay. yeah, when you're not okay. shooting. Yeah. Okay. So it's that same 70 beats per minute that I was talking about, you know? So like, I'm still, focusing on my shot process, even though I'm not shooting, but like inside of like my headphones is songs that are in that kind of process. And then the kind of like beats per minute from that 70 that I was talking about. Yeah. So like, that's how I keep myself calm in terms of like archery competitions and stuff like that. Um, I like shooting the shit, you know, like some people think it's annoying, but like, um, just, just like talking like, okay, cool. Your what's your gear like and stuff like that. How are you shooting kind of stuff yeah. like that. Like just have like that friendly banter with like your bailmates and stuff like that. And then it reduces the seriousness of it. And then everyone has a good time. Yeah, and, ja and Japanese that kind of keeping that mind um, in the zone is called Mushin. Mushin. Mm. No mind. It's, but it really just means like you don't have to focus on anything. You just keep in the zone. Yeah. It's a very nice Zen kind of uh, process. Um Josh, dude, you're crushing it tonight. On a serious note, what's the next step in, for you in archery? What's a goal that you have to that you want to achieve in archery? Oh, dude, like in terms of like best, like my next thing that I want to achieve, like for me personally, like Barebo as a community online, I totally love it. You know, like there's a bunch of you, there's a bunch of groups on Facebook. You have a question you could ask, and then like I have friends like 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 josh you know like mm -hmm. i could just like chat him up on facebook messenger and then like he would help me out with this kind of stuff like i feel like the camaraderie and the brotherhood and the sisterhood in archery is super imperative mm -hmm. to like what i'm doing so like my goal is not necessarily like win these competitions or anything like that but try to grow it grow barebow archery here in los angeles yeah it's a fine goal i mean any single string archery out there would be great you know just keep it going I, mm -hmm. we get overwhelmed by compound and then you you find out like yeah but the most dedicated people in archery are single stringers mm -hmm. um but yeah it's that that's that's an awesome goal um so do you think that you'll become a coach someday or like i got my usa level two you know like okay. just yeah. kind of safe sport you know that, that kind of shenanigans and stuff like that but like i don't know like i don't there's there's people that could coach Unfortunately, I'm one of those individuals who don't know how to coach. So like, it's kind of like learning your people skills and stuff like that. So hopefully like I will be able to coach into a way that like I could show people how to shoot, but like just being that person on the range, always willing to answer your question is kind of more than enough for me right now. You know, I, fi I find it better. I'm just going to be uh, controversial a little bit about coaching. Um, there are people who think that they can coach. Oh yeah. There are, there are people who think they can teach martial arts mm -hmm. and they, they really believe that because they, <clears throat> they love it so much. They love the sport so much that I just want to give back. I want to do that. 
<clears throat> it's that it's possible. Mm -hmm. It's possible to be coached, but it's always better to go out and if you had a good coach, yeah. if you had a really good coach, then you say to you, to me like, Hey, I want to become a coach. I find that those people are really good, even better coaches. You know what I mean? Because yeah, they, because they had the the knowledge of this yeah. coach, and then they're taking that and they're making Some, it their own. And then making it bigger, right? Yeah, I was just making it bigger. I mean, uh, like I've seen martial artists do the same thing. They had terrible teachers, but then they go out and they want to be a teacher. And I'm like, Ugh, I like that. It ain't gonna work. In, in in retrospect, like I I really admire what you just said. Like I know teachers out there that are the best teachers in terms of like teaching like economics and business in a college level. And then the reason why they're so good is because they had very like mediocre or shit teachers kind of thing. And yeah. they want to kind of like pave the way better for those other individuals. So like, I don't know, like I, I, I resonate with that. You're, you're yeah. absolutely right. I, you know, and, and sometimes in that, in that situation too, I've got, I've had a lot of uh, good, my favorite teachers were ones who ran their own business. You know, okay. they were, they were my business because yeah, they, that, that teaches you, you know, life, how to life teaches you some lessons too. But anyway, for going back, going back to archery, tell me a little bit about the hunting stuff. I, I didn't know that you hunted. Oh my God, dude, you're going to, Oh my God. It, it's the worst. So during COVID-19, I literally thought the world was going to end. I literally thought it was the end of fucking days. Like, it was just like, yeah. oh, my God, this mass shenanigans in L.A. And then everyone is just so herd mentality. So when, when I found out that Oak Tree Gun Club was essential business, like, they're very more predominantly um, compound, hunting compound. They're, it's yeah. very set up for that kind of stuff. It's not necessarily single string. So, like, as I was working there, I was, I was like, oh, cool, compound. Let me try this out. And then from there, like, um, I literally just picked up a compound. I was just like, all right, cool, dial this all in. And then I was just like, okay, cool, I'm going to learn how to hunt so I could feed my family just in case if, like, yeah, sure. during COVID-19. <laughs> okay. Like, we're running out of toilet paper. Everyone's freaking out. Like, I'm gonna be so and then, like, I have, like, a bug out bag right there because, like, this thing. Don't I'm laugh. Gonna... We all thought, like, every everyone ah. thought that there's, you know, like, you're not alone. I was scared. And then I was just like, okay, cool. Like, I just want to provide for my family. So like, I, I got a little Hoyt bow and then like, there's, can I get it? There's like a little skull right there. And then, yeah, it fed, it fed me, me and my mom and my friends. Like it was a giant hog, you know, like, and then yeah. knowing that like the food was organic and stuff like that was just a really cool, like promising note that like, okay, cool. Like as a man, I feel like you have to be a provider. And then, Unfortunately, my silly ass thought the world was going to end. So I learned how to fucking hunt, you know, <laughs> oh, yeah. that's funny. That's funny. So you got out, you got, you shot something. That's, that's good. That did, did you get that, that excitement when you shot your first animal and just was like super intense moment or. I was so scared. Like my thing was, all right, cool. Like, I don't want this animal to suffer. Like I want this thing done as quick as possible like it literally like it was a full pass through and then the pig died in like a couple seconds you know and then like we, we like we treated it and stuff like that and then it just worked out but like from there like that was like the last time i hunted because like unfortunately like through work parameters and the world not ending like i'd rather just go to whole foods and like get my food person <laughs> okay, hey, that's okay you know like I'm in okay. LA. You're, you're in LA. Why would you? I mean, it's tough to go out and get hunting, get into hunting, but all right. Um, so any last, like what, what's your advice for someone who comes, who's, who's just getting into archery? What's oh, your man. one piece of wisdom that's going to make me personally better at archery? Oh man. My, my thing, what makes everyone good at archery? Yeah. You were like, there's two levels of it. So one, have fun like honestly like get a couple of your friends grab a couple like brews shoot in the backyard you know like have some fun you know like it's a really obtainable sport like hopefully like it's going to be like the next pickleball and where like a lot of archers are coming in and then they're interested that so like awesome. that's one thing i'd totally love that but like where i'm at right now in a competition level is uh success is a very lonely road man like you you don't need a group of like 30 people you just need like four bad motherfuckers and then like they'll just help you out through the whole thing so success is a lonely road and like 
your your vibe like makes your tribe. So like once you have those four people, like you could control the world. You know, you'll take over the world. You'll take over this archery stuff if everyone's all dedicated and being accountable for everyone else. I think you got you know your vibe is amazing. Um, you know, and I just want to thank you for being on the show. It was really cool getting to know you, dude. Honestly, no, um, you hang up. This was cool for me. <laughs> <laughs> I was. I was nervous the whole day. I was like, oh, shit, I'll get to talk to Mick Chambers. Like, dude, this <laughs> could talk to the most famous bareboat people, like the Matt Yakas, the John Demers and shit. I'm like, oh, my fucking God, I've made it. I'm fucking famous. I'm oh, fucking but no, man, like, this is truly honorably a blessing for me. Thank you. No, hey, no worries. I mean, you got to, you know, like John Demer says, he puts his pants on like everyone. He jumps into them both legs at the same time. So, you know, it's, <laughs> these guys are, it, it's my honor though. I, I want to tell everyone, I mean, in front of everyone, it's like, uh, I'm just saying it's an honor to have you guys on. You guys are the stars of the show. You guys are the one that are going out doing it. I'm not doing what you do. I just here to make sure that you get promoted. And, uh, you know, Burnaby, again, like I said, at the top of the show, you have, um, you have a unique personality and you're making bearable better. So thank you very much for all you do. I appreciate it. I love it. that, dude, Mick. Thank you so much. I'm truly blessed. You're you're welcome. And shoot great at uh, Arizona Cup. Um, actually, before we go, a couple minutes. Is there anyone else wants to ask uh, Burnaby some questions before we call it in? Thanks for the gate keep <laughs> gatekeeper cigar, brother. That's awesome. Thanks, Josh. Uh, thanks everyone for you're welcome, joining dude. us. Don't forget to check out our sponsor, ArcherPass.com. We love you all. Hunt the good stuff, and we'll talk to you in the next one. Wait, week. Mick, hold on just a second. Before Wait. we leave, I just need to say something, dude. Okay, go. Jesus Christ is king. The only way to redemption is through Jesus Christ. Can I, I get an amen? Guys. Can I get an amen, brother? Amen. All right, we'll talk to you later. With the, On that note, see you later, everyone.